Good evening and welcome to this evening's webinar. Tonight we're discussing CompTIA's Network Plus Exam N10-005 and the objective that we're going to cover is 1.7. And what is that objective tonight? Well, it's DNS. Well, actually it's DNS concepts and its components. So tonight we will talk about DNS. We will talk about DNS servers, DNS records, and then conclude with dynamic DNS and what it is. So first thing we need to talk about is what is DNS. DNS is domain name system. Uh, that's essentially how we get, well, it's essentially how our computers know that when we type in Google, what IP address that we want to go to. DNS is our friend. I don't think we could function on today's modern networks without it. And you want to know what? That's a good thing. It's a good thing we don't have to map out these networks. DNS does it for us. Now, it's very uh, structured in nature. Uh, if the local domain name system server doesn't have the answer to the request, it passes it up the line to the ISP. If the ISP name server doesn't have it, it passes it up the line. It eventually will get to a top level domain and if that doesn't have the answer, it will pass it along to the root servers and then back down the chain it goes. Everybody who sent or passed along the request actually gets to see the reply come back down. It's very, very structured. There's no skipping the chains. Um, now, DNS also uses fully qualified domain names, FQDNs. And what does that mean? Well, if you look at www.google.com, well, that's a fully qualified domain name. The com is the top level domain. The portion that's Google is equal to the local domain. And the www, well, that is the specific server or service that belongs to that subdomain. Uh, www.google are actually subdomains of the com domain. A lot of the times you'll hear people say the .com domain, and that's actually kind of wrong. It's actually just the com domain. Um, we just throw the dots in there as separators. And one of the great things about DNS Guess what? We don't have to know all the IP addresses. Uh, we just have to know the human friendly names in order to navigate in today's networks. So now let's talk about DNS servers. Now there are several different kinds of servers and they operate at different levels. There are usually local DNS servers. Uh, these servers are on the local network and they contain host files uh, that usually map the fully qualified domain name to the IP address in the local subdomain. A lot of the times your router actually has a, a small DNS server built into it. If it doesn't, it passes it along to uh, a local names, not local, but to a name server, a second tier name server. There are also, those second tier name servers are also considered local. Uh, they, that's about where they fit. They also have the host files and they also try and keep uh, a database of all the hosts in their subdomain. Eventually, you will get to a top-level domain. That's a TLD server. Those are those originally were com, org, net, edu for education, gov, mil, 
int, so on and so forth. The, those six were the original top-level domains. There's quite a few more now. Uh, there's there's biz, B-I-Z. I, I know that one. There's a couple of more. But each of those servers contain all of the information for their domains, kind of. Uh, if they don't have the, the information, they know where to find it. Uh, the TLD servers do delegate down to second level servers. Those are the ones usually contained at ISPs. But it is the top level domain server's responsibility to keep everything ordered. The third main type of server is root. And root is actually just a period, a dot. And what it does is it contains all of the information, all of the, the records for the top level domains. Uh, you can actually send a request, a DNS request, up to a top level domain, and if it doesn't have the answer, it will pass it along to a root server. And then the root server will figure it out and then pass it back down. Those are the main types of DNS servers. Okay, when you get a response back from the server, sometimes it'll, the, the response back will be authoritative. It'll come from an authoritative server or can come from a non-authoritative server. And what that means is, is that if the DNS server that responded to your request is actually the, the server where that information, where that FQDN record was configured, that's an authoritative response. Um, there's no doubt about it. That server knows the correct answer. There you go. Now, a non-authoritative response, that's when a DNS server res that responds to a request with information, well, it received it from another server that received it from another server. It's kind of a, um, a response by uh, rumor. And those responses come back as being non-authoritative. They usually work, um, but if they don't work and you think there's a DNS problem, that's because you're probably getting that information from a non-authoritative server. Let's move on. So now let's talk about the different kinds of DNS records that you need to know. Uh, DNS information is kept in database files. Databases are, make, are made up of records. Now there are a ton of records in a DNS database. The ones that I'm going over tonight are the ones that you need to know according to CompTIA. So if somebody is talking about a DNS A record, what they're actually talking about is they're talking about the record that maps a human friendly name, an FQD, excuse me, an FQDN to an IPv4 address. That's the main record that, well, that's usually the record that we're dealing with quite frequently, particularly when we're using our web browsers. And then there's the quad A record. It does the same thing for IPv6. So those two function pretty much the same. Another another record that you're going to have to know and that you will hear about on occasion is the C name. Now what the C name is, well, that's the canonical names to host name. So what's a canonical name? It's an alias. Um, a lot of the times, well, according to some information, we send requests in w with the wrong name, but we end up in the right spot. Well, that's because of the C name records. Those are the aliases. Now, MX records are another one that we deal with quite frequently. The MX, the MX records 
Well, those those map domain names to a list of message transfer agents. Okay, those are used by SMTP servers to make sure that your outgoing mail goes where it needs to go. Uh, MX records are for SMTP, so they're from outgoing, but SMTP also transfers mail in between servers, mail servers. So the MX records make sure that the mail goes where the mail needs to go. And the last one that you need to know about is the PTR, the PTR record. Well, and that is the pointer record. And what does it do? Well, the pointer points to the canonical name. So it points to the C name record. So if there is a possible alias, it points it back to the C, the C name record for the DNS server to take a look. Um, these ones aren't that hard to remember, but you do need to remember them. Uh, let's move on. And now we get to talk about dynamic DNS. Now, dynamic DNS, there are actually two concepts in one. I'm going to give you both of them, and then I'm going to tell you which one that you pretty much need to know. The first concept is dynamic DNS updating. And that's the, the method of updating a traditional name server without the intervention of an administrator. No manual editing of the configuration. Uh, you can set, set them up so that that happens. The other one is just plain dynamic DNS. No updating involved in that, at least not in the name of it. And that permits lightweight and immediate updates to a local DNS database. It's kind of the same thing, but a little bit different. Uh, it's where it comes in handy, where it's really useful, is when the name stays the same, the FQDN stays the name, but the IP address changes on a regular basis. Uh, that's usually where dynamic DNS comes in handy in a local network, and you should configure it. So if you have a bunch of computers in your local network, and they tend to switch IP addresses, uh, you don't have your DHCP server set to hand out preferred IP addresses, so it just is handing out the random ones that it's supposed to, and you're running a wireless network, then you should have dynamic DNS enabled. Oh, and now that concludes, actually, that concludes our discussion on Objective 1.7. So we talked about dynamic DNS. We talked about DNS records. We talked about DNS servers. And we talked about the domain name system itself.